Hi, I'm Sasha. Welcome to my channel. In this Azure step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import data either from Azure Data Lake Store Gen 1 or Gen 2 into a SQL data warehouse. If you are new to this channel and want to learn more about advanced analytics, machine learning and cloud computing, start now by subscribing to this channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss anything. To start, we are going to create a few services. First of all, a SQL Data Warehouse. Clicking Create. Picking an existing empty resource group. And I'll next, give the database a name. And I'm calling it Contosa Retail Data Warehouse. And I have to specify or create a new server or pick an existing one. And I also have to give that server a name. Let's call it Azure Step by Step SQL Server. I'm going to specify a new server admin name complex password and I have to type in that password again and then I'm picking the location where that server should be hosted in my case West Europe. I don't want to allow Azure services to access that server since I want to control that over the firewall. So my new server and then of course the performance level. I'm picking a newly Gen 2 server and I don't want to have that huge data warehouse for my testing purposes, so I'm scaling it down to a DW300C. I don't want to restore any data. I want to start with a clean database. The collation is also fine. I don't want to specify any tags. And I'm going to review what I want to create so far, though that looks good. I'm clicking on Create. In the meantime, while this is creating, I'm going to create the two storage accounts, one data like storage and one. And it states already that this is outdated, but to show both sides, I still want to create that. Give that service a name, picking the right subscription. And again, the same resource group with the same location. Pay as you go is fine. I want to have that encrypted. Looks good so far. And while this is creating, last but not least, a data like store gen two. And this is located in the storage account service. So let's pick a storage account, click create, again, selecting the same resource group and give that service a name, selecting West Europe as the location and keep it standard as well as the V2 general purpose API. And yeah, I want to set it to the cheapest version, in my case, local redundant storage, which is still three copies in one region. But this would be a, a normal storage account, which means that this only knows the container level and no underlying hierarchies, no folder structure, no POSIX file system in the end. To be able to enable that, I just have to enable the hierarchical namespace feature. So clicking that on enable, the rest is fine. I want to force secure transfer. I don't want to put that into a special virtual network. So all networks is fine. Again, no tags. And I'm going to review what I want to set up. So that looks good. And again, click on create. But there's one thing which we also need to set up. I want to have Azure Active Directory authentication on all three services. For that reason, I also need to create a service principle. So I'm here in my Azure Active Directory. I click on app registration, specify a new one. And again, I have to give that a new name. So let's pick this one. Single tenant is fine. I keep the web interface, but I don't have to specify anything because I need just the service principle. And here we go. And within that app, I definitely need the client ID later on. So let me save that as well as the object ID. And I need a password. For that reason, let's go to certificates and secrets. Create a new secret. One year is fine. So let's specify that. So I want to use that for the SQL data warehouse. And this is only shown once, so let's copy that. So I saved that in a secure location. So let's have a look at what's happening with my services. And the two storage services are already done. So let's dig into those services. First of all, this is my data lake store one. And I have to grant the SQL data warehouse access to that. And that's the reason why I created that service principle. So let's go to the data explorer. And this is of course currently empty. And there is an access button. So let's click on that. And on the right hand side, you see that I have got access, there's anonymous access, which is also fine. And I want to assign the service principle. So let's click on plus, search for the service principle. Here is it, click select and grant complete access rights for this folder and all children. And I want to not only 
set that access permission, but also set that as a default permission. Click on OK. So we can close that. And now this user has access to this storage account. Let's do the same thing on the data lake Gen 2. So clicking on that resource and selecting the new file system, creating a new one. Let's call it also Contosa Retail Data Warehouse. And if I try to create a new one, you'll find out that this is currently not an option. I need to use the Azure Storage Explorer. So let's move to the Azure Storage Explorer and grant access rights there. And I'm in the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. If you want to know how to download that, I'm going to add that into the description, like all the other relevant links. And I added already that account to the quick access. So let's open that, have a look at the blob containers. And here's our Contoso retail data warehouse. And I can right click on that and say manage access. And currently it's not possible to have a lookup in here. For that reason, I can add a user or group either by using the UPN or an object ID. And that's the reason why we saved the object ID of our service principal. Let me add that. And again, select access and default, default rights for newly created items, as well as add my own account. Otherwise, I'm allowed to use that service, but not that file system. And again, adding that for all relevant options and as a default, clicking save and successfully saved. So let's import some data. For that, I'm going to switch back to the portal. And in that portal, I've got an option to download and create some new demo files. For that reason, I'm going to open the cloud shell and make that a little bit bigger. And here I'm in my cloud shell. So let's move to the cloud drive folder. And in here I've got six gigabyte of free space. And let's use that to download some sample data and upload it to both storage accounts. And for that reason, I want to use a tool called AC copy. And since this is currently not installed in here, I have to download that. And you can download that at AKMS download AC copy V10 for Linux, for example. Here we go. You need to untar that. And then I want to move those files from the subdirectory to my local directory. So let's check. So let's remove the directory as well as the tar file. So here we go. AC copy is there. For our data, I want to create a temp directory called data. And then I want to download that data from one of our sample data sets. And for that reason, I'm using AC copy. I specify the copy command and then I have to specify the source. In my case, it's a Contosa Retail Data Warehouse from our central plop store. And I want to put that into my local folder. In my case, it's called Home, Sasha, Cloud Drive and Data and make sure that I'm copying everything. So let's do it recursive. And here we go. So that's done. And let's upload those files to our data lake store gen two. And for that reason, I first need to log in with my credentials. So it's giving me that code, which I copy as well as a link, which I can click. I'm entering that code, log in with my credentials and I can close that tab and I'm logged in. And now I'm able to upload that with my credentials. Let's specify AC copy. I want to use the copy command, specify our local folder, which we just created as well as the destination, which is HTTPS, the name of our storage account, then .dfs, .core.windows.net slash and the name of our file system. And once again, I specify that I want to have that recursive and just to be on the safe side, I also specify the overwrite flag. Oh, small mistake. So let's make sure that I put quotes around the source and the destination as well as fix the destination. And I also want to upload that to the data lake store gen one for that. I'm using the normal set command data lake store file system upload. And I have to specify the name of the storage account, then the source path and the destination path, which is relative to the account. And again, just to be on the safe side, let's specify the overwrite. So everything is in place. I can close my cloud shell and let's have a look if everything is there where it should be. So let's first look at the data lake gen one, the data explorer. And here we go, 25 subdirectories. So that looks good. 
And also, let's also have a look at the Storage Explorer again. Refresh that. And again, looks good. So here are the 25 folders. Okay, up next, let's move to Azure Data Studio and connect to the SQL Data Warehouse to import everything. And here I am. So let's open that, connect to the server. And this should complain because I didn't specify any firewall rule. So let's move back to the portal, to that resource group and to the SQL Server and clicking on show firewall settings. And I'm just adding my client IP address Call it home, for example, and click on save. So saved successfully and moving back. And now I'm connected to that server. Let's look at the databases. Here's my SQL data warehouse. Let's opening that. And currently the tables are completely empty. So let's open a SQL notebook and let me go through what I need to do. First of all, I want to create a master key. The master key is used to encrypt the credentials and everything I need within the SQL data warehouse. So let's create that master key. And the next thing I need to do is specifying the credentials. For that reason, I want to specify the Azure Active Directory credential. That's the reason why I copied the client ID, which I need to specify first. So let's remove the old one. Then login Microsoft.com. And this is the tenant ID. So I can reuse uh, my current tenant. If you want to have that whole URL, there's an easy way to find that. So let's go again back to Azure Active Directory and to my app registrations. And I'm here in my app registration. And in here I can click on endpoints and I see all the relevant endpoints. And the one we are going to use is OAuth 2.0 token endpoint v1. Okay, so that's exactly what I'm going to copy. Moving back to Azure Data Studio and then I'm going to paste that in here. And I have to specify the secret which I saved. So let's use that one, the new one. So these are my Azure credentials. So create it successfully. And I also can specify with a data lake Gen 2 that storage key. So I don't have to rely on Azure Active Directory, but I can, can use that one. For that reason, I'm going to specify that again. So let's move back to the portal, directly to the storage. And I'm picking the data lake Gen 2 storage. And in here, I can copy the access keys. So let's pick the first access key, for example, and moving back to Azure Data Studio again. And I'm specifying the new credentials. Since I'm using only that credentials, I can specify any identity. I just call it user and creating those. So I've got my Azure Active Directory as well as my storage key credentials and I could pick one of them. Up next, I need to create the external data sources. I can specify one for Data Lake Gen 1. And for that reason, I call it Azure Data Lake and then just the name of the storage account and pretty much the same for Gen 2, but in that case, slightly different way to write that. That's the name of my storage account. And that up here is the name for my file system or my container. So Contoso Retail Data Warehouse. And I also have to use that file system command. So Azure plop file system. And this is secured. So that's why this has two S's. Let's create those. And here we go. So we've got the two data sources. I also need to specify the data format. And the data format in this case is pipe separated, no special row separator, no special string delimiter. This is the way how, how data is formatted. And I don't, want, I don't want to use any special default types. So I want to create all those external tables. External tables is nothing else than a reference to the storage account, to that table, to that folder structure. But internally, I want to put that into a special schema. So let's, that's why I create an ADLS1 schema for my data lake gen one. And let's have a look at one of those tables. So the command is create external table. I have to give that thing a name, of course, specify the structure. And down here, I have to specify the relative path within the data lake store gen one. So it's Contoso Retail Data Warehouse, the DIM account directory. Then I specify the data source I just created, the file format I created, and these two lines specify what happens if there's corrupt data in there. And in my case, I'm specifying the default value that I don't allow any corrupt data. This would 
directly throw an error message. And I'm doing that for all 25 tables. So let's create those 25. Perfect. So let's go to do the same thing for the data lake gen two. That's pretty much the same story, creating a new schema. And let's have a look at the create external table statement again. Of course, I have to specify the name of the table, the schema of that table, and I'm specifying data lake store gen two. Everything else is pretty much the same except for the location. Since I specified already in the data source, the container name, I don't have to specify that again. So that's why this is a relative path from the perspective of the container level. And I'm doing that again for the 25 tables. So here we go. And up next, I want to create internal tables because querying the external tables would definitely be the slowest option. So that's why I'm creating a new schema for my internal tables for the load of the data lake gen one. And then, then I'm creating my tables in here and it's a so-called CTAS statement, create table as the select state from, from my external table. So that's why I don't have to specify the schema again because it's already defined in my external table. And again, I give that thing a new name. I specify the distribution pattern, which, which could be either replicated, so having the same copy in every partition of that table, mainly for small reference dimension table, and I'm also using the hash algorithm to really distribute that by the values of that key. And there is also a third option, which is round robin, which is mainly used for staging tables. So perfectly for writing data and not the best option for reading it. So that's why I'm not using it in here. And I also can specify an option to label my import so I can find it later on when I want to debug that. So let's execute those. And I'm doing exactly the same thing with importing it from data lake gen two. So creating a schema and importing the data through the other data source. Perfect, and that's done as well. And since I imported such a large amount of data, I want to optimize my indexes. So let's rebuild those. And I'm exactly doing the same thing for the tables in the CSO two schema. And I also want to create some additional statistics to really optimize everything I can to have a fast SQL data warehouse. And for that reason, I'm creating some additional ones for every column of every dimension. So let's create that for the CSO one schema. And of course, the same thing for the second schema. So let's move down and execute that. And here we go. So that's created as well. Let's move down to, yeah, using it in the end. So let's query that. First of all, a simple query on the first data set, as well as a simple query on the second one. So that's about it. So let's move a little bit back to my SQL data warehouse, have a look at the SQL data warehouse itself. And as you can see, um, we definitely have way more resources allocated than we used. So that's really just a tiny bit of yeah usage in the end. And I'm also interested in other topics which I could create for you. So g please use the comment section below. Give me some ideas what I could record next as an Azure step-by-step -step or totally different type of video on my channel. So please have a look at the other videos. So I'm looking forward to see you soon.